oh, I'm hot. Henry Tyler says, you're hot, Miss Perryman. I said, I know. But anyway, good afternoon, everybody. This is Brenda Perryman, and welcome to Table Talk with Brenda Perryman. And we have the ladies on the show today, and I know a lot of you like that because we're going to talk some real hardcore issues. And first, I'd like them to introduce themselves, and we're going to start with our guest co-host. Tamika Ashford, public relations consultant. Hi, Dr. Rose Moulton, psychologist, speaker, and author, and mother, and wife. Oh, what else? Awesome. Prankster? Friend. No <laughs> prank. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm attorney Tiffany McEvans-Dalla, also adjunct professor at Thomas M. Cooley Law School. I'm Brenda Perry. <laughs> Too much to list. Okay, as is our tradition, I have my book on this day in African American life in Detroit by Ken Coleman, and he always has interesting facts that coordinate with the day of the week. And I think this is April 18th, and on this day in 1996, Wall, the Wall Street Journal's Angelo B. Henderson pens a feature about David Hump the Grinder Humphreys, who created the extravagant and eye-popping series of shows that began in 1985 called Hair Wars, where 300 models representing 100 local salons compete for hair design supremacy. The effort has attracted the nation's attention, really, and it's attracted worldwide attention. And Detroit really is like the king of hair or queen of hair. I mean, but think about it, 100 salons, that's a lot of salons. Oh, yeah, is that the black business? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just wondering. And also, ladies, I have an announcement, and I'm excited about this announcement, because it's on and popping. Come one, come all. This is your invitation to join R.J. Watkins as he and his staff here at WHPR celebrate Henry H.T. Tyler's 65th birthday. Oh. Unbelievable. He has no gray hair. <laughs> none in the hair, none, no mustache, and he has all this goatee, and it's all black. Henry has found the fountain of youth, so age is nothing but a number. And that is next week, Sunday. Oh. <laughs> he says just for men, but I don't believe it, ladies and gentlemen. Next Sunday, April 27th, 2014, at 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., right here at the station. So we want you to come join RJ and the WHPR television and radio personalities as we honor HT, the gentle giant, as he reaches this great milestone. Come and congratulate and share your thoughts on television. Birthday cards are greatly appreciated. After all, this is WHPR and 160 Victor. Highland Park. You know where we are, 48203. So come have a slice of cake with H.T. Tyler. I know I'll be there. I'm going to have two slices of cake, <laughs> one there and one to take home. So don't miss the fun. And I'm so excited about Henry, Henry reaching this milestone. Okay, ladies, we have a number of things to uh, talk about, but we also, ladies and gentlemen, we have a call in that's going to deal with a, a, an event happening here in Detroit next week that deals with hiring, the hiring of African-American women. But before we get to that, let's first talk about the Detroit student who protested her U University of Michigan admission denial. She argues that the school needs more diversity. Did any of you read about that? Yes, yes. absolutely, yes. What do you think? Well, I agree, and I, it looks like U of M agrees as well because they're implementing efforts in the last few days, I've heard, to try to boost their minority enrollment, which we know has taken a significant nosedive since they got rid of um, affirmative action, considering um, race and background, things of that sort, and admissions. Yeah, but she, had a, she scored 23 on the ACT. And we don't know what kind of classes that she had in school. And exactly. See, I'm I'm gonna play devil's advocate hey, here. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. 
unfortunately, all schools are not created equal. Um, even law school, I went to Cooley Law School and Cooley Law School is a private school. So grades at Cooley were different from grades at DCL, which is now Michigan State College of Law. And students would leave Cooley and go to Michigan State and their GPAs would boost because the grading scale was different. So just because, and not to downplay this young lady because she appears to be very bright, very articulate, the issue that I'm having is with the criteria that they have as far as choosing because it doesn't seem to be set or standard. They're, they don't say, well, you have to have or we would like a 3.6 GPA and above. They, they don't really have a cutoff or a range. They just look at different things. So that's where the issue is for me because it, it does seem to be very subjective. So that that is the bigger issue for me. There were some students that were saying that they knew people that had 3.9s and you know 27s and 28s on ACT and they were not accepted either for whatever reason. So before you throw race into it, although they do, do need to expand their minority students all the way around, not just African American students, I think the bigger issue is that how are they actually selecting all of their students? Because there doesn't seem to be a standard or set criteria. That you can look at. And yes. see, my mm -hmm. point exactly. that I was making was I think they need to boost minority um, enrollment. Absolutely they do. Mm -hmm. I don't think this young lady, just because she's protesting, meets the criteria. So I wasn't making the point that right. she should get in. Because a 23 in comparison to uh, 30. What, yeah, or 30. 29, yeah, or right? 29 or what have you is uh, minuscule. Now, I will say this. When I was in um, DPS and I graduated from DPS, I scored a 23 on the ACT, which at that time, considering the rest of my classmates, I ended up with a full scholarship to Eastern Michigan University because in comparison, right. they saw it as just far and above what my classmates, my peers, but my son, who forgot his calculator at his ACT, and he just recently retook it because he wasn't pleased with his 27 that he got, um, <laughs> because he forgot his calculator. And that was, was without right, his calculator. Without his calculator. Oh, okay. So right. he just went back, but he's at a private school right. where his classmates right. are getting 30s, mm -hmm. 31s, 32s, 33s, and they are not being accepted to U of M. Right. He comes home and he's telling me, Mom, he was like, oh my gosh, I, I gotta go retake it again because you know I need at least a 33. And he has friends with three nines and 32s on ACTs and they're not getting admitted to U of M. So the competition is, is really tough, but unfortunately, I think it really um, kind of pushes out a lot of students that will go there and do well. Exactly. Because I was there with presidential scholars who scored 31s, 32s, 33s, who dropped out after the first year oh, and a half. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And I ended up, gra and I, I was accepted to U of M as well. Not with, they, they gave me partial scholarships, but not enough for me to go, so I decided to go where the money was. But my point is, yeah, here's someone from DPS with a 23 that ends up graduating with honors, magna mm -hmm. cum laude, and you have other students coming from school districts with um, who, who had the 30s mm -hmm. and uh, and you know the high ACT scores that did not fare as well um, in undergrad. So absolutely, like Tiffany said, it has to be some other factors that are looked at. We know ACTs predict college success. That's their that's the goal of ACTs. Yeah, but supposedly, do they really? Yeah, that's I what they say. So. No. Supposedly, I didn't even take the math section no. of my ACT. I I, w I was working on it because I took my ACT down at CAS and I said I said this is tedious I was one of <laughs> no, I, no I was one of those children I told you I think I'm abstract random the way I, I think <laughs> seriously well that's the creative part well, of you. I can't <laughs> help it but I did really well on the verbal mm -hmm. but the thing is I know people I graduated in the very middle of my class my class had 71 people in it. That was my my high school senior class. But I graduated from college way before the 30 years before the girl voted most likely to succeed with the with the great grade point average. I used to get bored in school and I kind of created some havoc here and there. But I you know, I knew the stuff and then sometimes like I take a test 
and I finished the test so quick, and the teacher said, how'd you do that? You know, it was all that. I went to a little private school. But if you notice here, I have some comments of some college students, because one of my former students did put this on his um, Facebook page, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, this one person says there, people have, have been going in on her grades and ACT scores. It's crazy. And someone else says, with her grades, ACT, and activity, she should have been accepted. Well, they say she was on a debate team, award-winning debate team. But my thing is grades, but what were the classes she took? Mm -hmm. The classes mm -hmm. mean something. And that's I was right. going to say, that's the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. People don't really want to acknowledge what's happening in school day to day. Are our kids really being prepared, you know, right. after college? And here's another reality. You know, a 3.0 at Cass Tech, is it really a 3.0 at a Cody Hello. or a Henry Ford? These are the realities that we have to look at. And even with Cass Tech, are there opportunities to raise the bar there? So I think, um, and I am going to throw the race card in there because, again, it's the elephant in the room that no one really wants to address. But um, I do question if our schools are really preparing our students for mm -hmm. higher learning. I do believe that a number of students come in inadequate. I know when I Absolutely. went off to college and I went to one of the better schools, Cass Tech, I did feel like I had to catch up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so and even after college, I still felt like there was still more that I had to do, more coaching, more learning mm -hmm. that and had to happen. And a lot that we, you know, and I hate to say it, but we're not exposed to. That's right. Absolutely. It was, and, it, and throw that into the culture mm -hmm. shock of the situation. Mm -hmm. I also know that UCLA, their students recently been protesting the same thing, um, lack of minority students, like their population of minority students have drastically been decreased since, you know, the um, affirmative action ban uh, went into effect. So I do think they have to, and this is the, the university's responsibility, right. implement some type of efforts to encourage Absolutely. more uh, minority, qualified minority students, yes. because I'm not one to, let's just bring the race mm -hmm. number up. Mm -hmm. I don't think people should just get jobs based on their race or, you know, ethnic background or even gender. I think that people, it should be based on your ability to be Absolutely. successful. Um, and so all this has to be taken well, into Wayne account. Well, Wayne State is upping their academic um, requirements. requirements also. Mm -hmm. And I just feel so bad for the people who are in the EAA schools who are not being taught, who are getting just computer work. Mm -hmm. And their teacher, or so-called Teach for America teacher, is um, not even a trained teacher. Not even a trained teacher. Not even a trained teacher. Is that the guess? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, that's that's fine. We can take her now. She called, called in a bit early. It's a he. Oh, he. Oh, BG. Oh, let me see. <laughs> Good. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello? Hello? Bonjour. Hello? Hello, Mr. Moore? You call me for work on getting it. Like we should have some Shepherd and music on. Well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, yeah, we should have some music on. We have Mr. Moore, he's the chief of staff from this global um, corporation, and we're going to be talking about jobs next week, and I have all the information on it. Hopefully, uh, the phone is going to be working. Hello, Mr. Moore. Hello. Hello, Brenda. Uh, I apologize for the telephonic uh, connection here. Uh, oh. Thank you so very much for uh, allowing me to speak on the show today. Um, can you hear us? Can you hear me? I, I can hear you uh, vaguely, yes. Okay, we'll talk louder. We'll talk louder. <laughs> thank and, you. And welcome. And uh, with me, I have my co-host. Uh, we have Tamika. We have Dr. Rose and we have Attorney Tiffany, and we would like to talk about this uh, Step It Up uh, program, Step It Up America. Could you tell us about it? 
Thank you so very much, and, and glad to meet you ladies over the phone. Likewise. Uh, Stepping Up America is a program put on by UST Global. We're a uh, global IT service company. Uh, our CEO, Sajan Pla, serves on the National STEM Council, uh, and uh, he, over the year, heard about the different programs going on, and the thing that disturbed him most was that uh, there's there's a lot of training programs, but uh, the the number that actually result in creating jobs uh, was not sufficient. So we wanted to take and do something a little different. And instead of having a training program, we actually wanted to come out with a jobs program. So that's what Step It Up America is. Uh, we have a long history uh, over the last 14 years as we have developed college graduates coming out of universities around the world. Uh, we have developed a training curriculum, a 90-day boot camp type of approach to take people from the uh, academic world and pair them so that they have the business acumen to actually work on projects uh, and technology in, inside the business. Um, this has been a very successful uh, part of our business model uh, to the point that uh, we went to Mexico and did a, uh, a joint venture with the Mexican government to train 30,000 of their graduates and uh, actually hire 10,000 to become UST employee. When Sajan was interviewed uh, by the Washington Post, they asked, what could we do in the United States to take and to further such a program? And uh, Sajan said that in 2014, we'll take and uh, source, train, and hire 1,000 minority women in 10 of the U.S. cities uh, and give them jobs in technology. So that is the, the heart and soul of, of, of the Step It Up program. Awesome, awesome. Now, why the focus on minority women? The reason that we wanted to focus in just some statistics that I, I throw out, I'm sure that uh, you're aware of, uh, of some of these, but um, in the Silicon Valley, for example, only one out of 14 uh, of the people that work in technology are, are uh, people of color. Um, U.S. population is made up of 6.8%, uh, according to the 2012 census, of African-American females, but only 1.3% of the technology jobs in this country are held by African-American females. Wow. If we take help deaths out of that, that plunges well below 1%. Wow. And the, 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 as we went in and we did the research to try to find out what was causing this, we found out, you know, from a very early age, there's, there's messaging being sent to our children that says, you don't need to take and, and, and concentrate on technology jobs. That's not for you. Yeah. Uh, there's no significant role models in the community that they can look at and see that someone that is in their family or that they know that, that are holding these type positions. Um, we launched in, in Atlanta uh, November of last year and we went to one of the major technology conferences there and it had 350 attendees, um, managers through CIOs, and, and the entire conference there were seven people of color, none of them were female. So this is a, an issue that goes across the nation, and, and the only way we're going to address it is to take and take uh, action to take and bring more people into the technology field. Um, another staggering secret of all the STEM jobs of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, technology takes, and there's more dollars spent on technology payroll than the other three combined. So it, 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 this is an area that we need to take and make sure that our numbers are coming up. Oh, wow. So that's science, technology, engineering, and math mathematics. That's STEM. Tiffany, did you have a question? Oh, well, I guess he kind of answered it. He did. He kind of answered it. Okay, Jamaica. I'm sorry, y'all. I couldn't hear the last question. Oh, okay, so how did you go about selecting Detroit? Um, I, was the question, how did we choose Detroit, Detroit yes. uh, we wanted to take and make an impact in the 10 uh, significant cities in the U.S. Detroit was picked because of the large corporate population here that have uh, IT shops inside the city and we know that you know Detroit's coming back and we wanted to be a part of that uh, resurgence uh, in Detroit area. Well what happens at the hiring event? The hiring event is where we'll take and have the, the, the ladies come in, 
They will take the, there's an aptitude test that we ask them to, to take to make sure that, you know, they're fit, a fit for the program. Uh, if they pass the aptitude test, we take and go through one-on-one -on -one interviews with them. Uh, we'll give them information about the program and uh, get their uh, complete application filled out. Oh. And our, our hiring event is coming up on April 25th, uh, and it's scheduled to, to be at the DEC at 440 East Congress Street. So that's the Detroit Employment Solutions Corporation mm -hmm. at 440 East Congress in Detroit. 440 East Congress mm -hmm. Street, that's correct, on April 25th. Awesome. Yeah, so I um, wanted to know how many women are you anticipating to become engaged in this program and what does the process I, I look apologize. like? I apologize, I didn't hear the last question. Yes, how many women are you anticipating to participate to come into the program? In Detroit, we'll take and start off with a class of 100. And this is okay. not just a, a one-time of, of, okay. you know, a program. We hope to take and have this perpetuate itself. If, it, uh, if the response in Detroit is as good as it has been in the other cities that we have launched in, which so far has been Atlanta, Philadelphia, uh, and Los Angeles, we have more demand for the students, uh, for the graduates, than we do supply. So but the initial start wow. is for 100. Wow. And, oh, let me just ask this before Rose's question, and this is paid training. The training is paid. Hello? Hello, I'm here. I'm sorry. Oh, what now? Is it, it's paid training? Yes. The, 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 once the students are accepted into the program, they're, they're paid a, uh, an hourly wage because oh, it's a rigorous program. It's 90 teaching days. It meets from 8 to 5 every day. Uh, but they will be paid in, as long as they successfully complete the course, then they're guaranteed jobs with UST uh, uh, upon graduation. Awesome. And uh, where can women pre-register? Two, a uh, two-part question. Where can they pre-register? And if they're not able to make the event, the hiring event, can they still be considered um, in some other way? Right. If, if they want to pre-register, if they want more information, if they can take and go to our website, which is www.joinstepitupamerica.com, they can pre-register and they can get any additional information that they may need. Awesome. Yeah, we have that on the screen. We put it on the screen also with the phone number. So we're great. Fantastic. Um, okay, that's, that's great. Now, after the training, I have a question. After the training, and the, if somebody's successful with the training, what happens next? They become UST associates, and we will take and place them in uh, on assignments in the greater Detroit area, working mainly uh, for Fortune 500 clients uh, in everything from quality assurance testing, business analysts, uh, entry-level uh, Java or .NET uh, developers, uh, and entry-level uh, project managers. Wow, that's great, BG. That is really, really great, and we're spreading the word about that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And it, it, there's a great need, and it's a win-win program for everyone that's involved. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the reason that we're reaching out and asking for the participation uh, of the Detroit corporate industry is that 50% of our students are, are single moms. They're the sole caregiver. So, we can't bring them on board and, and take and expect them to fly clear across the country for assignments. So we need to take and find assignments for them in the, in the Detroit area. Uh, but this keeps the, 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 the money that they will make will be kept in the Detroit area. Uh, it will take and give the community a, a, a chance to take and grow its technology presence. Um, you know, and these are game changers. We can teach someone technology, but we can't teach someone passion. And so when we do the interviews, we look for people that want to make a difference in their lives, awesome. that uh, can take and start a career that, you know, uh, within a few years they can be, they can be making six digits, and, and, and it's a, a, a new trajectory for, for most of these ladies to take and to have a, a, a new opportunity to change uh, their, their circumstance. What time does the event start on the 25th? And also, how will you measure the program? 
Could you hear that? I'm sorry, can you say it one more time? Yes, Please. what time will the event start on the 25th? And also, how will you measure the program? Uh, the uh, event on, the, on the, the, the 25th will be going on uh, all day and it, from, uh, let me get the, the specifics here for you. And, and the way that we, we measure it is by, uh, they come in, uh, like I said, they, they'll go through the, the, the application assessment uh, and then they'll do the one-on-one -on -one interviews and very quickly we will take and be getting back to them after the event to tell them the you know whether or not they have been able to uh, uh, get into the, qualify, the program. Qualify. Okay, we have another question for you. No, oh, I think we're good. Okay. Um, right. So once again, www.joinstepitupamerica.com, and everyone should pre-register. Correct. That's correct. Okay, and we're po we posted the the website and the phone number. Thank so, you so very much. I appreciate it and uh, look forward to, to taking and working with the greater Detroit area. Oh, absolutely. And thank you for including Detroit in this program. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a great thank program. You. Absolutely. A great program. Say mm -hmm. if somebody um, has had a they want people out of high school or who are out of high school though who maybe had a, a few units of college credits mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. and it's uh, they have to be available for a paid training uh, program and minority right. female so that is great they can have a GED or higher mm -hmm. awesome so I miss Perryman will this information be posted on your Facebook page as well yes I think I did post it but I'll post it again I will post it on my Facebook page. All right, we were talking about the young lady who was uh, denied entrance into U of M and we started branching out on some other variables and we talked about schools, the quality of certain schools like Henry Ford right now is an EAA school. And I was heard, for, I was told from by a staff member that the reading level of a lot of their seniors is sixth and seventh grade. Ms. Perryman, for our viewers that are not aware of EAA, can you tell us what that is? It's the Education Education Achievement Authority. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and, and that has Mr. Covington in charge of it. I just think it is ridiculous. And that's where the governor kind of came in and they identified the mm -hmm. 15 lowest performing schools from elementary, middle school, and high school. And so I guess they're giving them like a facelift, if you will, or it's perceived um, to kind of take the student from where they are and to bring them up to speed. For example, they're going beyond the traditional learning where you have a teacher at the front, you know, giving a lesson and they kind of had the kids to take a test to see where you are and they develop a tailor-made program for that student so that, so that they can actually catch up to their appropriate grade level. And is that program basically computerized? Computers are a huge part of, a huge component of it, and the, yes. the reason I ask that, I, I have a client um, earlier this week that works in a school district that's um, dealing with that, and she said that they are estimating a 30% layoff of the teachers in her school. They're, you know, and I asked her to repeat it, 30% because they're going to computer-based learning yeah. in the fall. Right, and then a oh, lot of, oh, as far yeah. as the EAA is concerned, a lot of uh, students are dropping out and getting going into the other the other Detroit public schools mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. They're going to have an attrition rate, and there's something wrong with all of this because I've talked to young people who said that they have a person who sits in the front of the room and tells them what to look for on the computer, and that's their lesson for today and they're not able to ask this person for help in the particular subject area because this person is more or less a babysitter, yeah. Yeah. A, a Teach for America teacher, some of them. That, and, and to tie this back into our first story, Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Exactly. How, are you, we we want to cry and get upset and throw our arms up about not being admitted into mm -hmm. prestigious schools, but look how we are training and educating That's our right. kids, not to, even to be major players, in the world and there are so many learning styles that's another thing oh, that people don't right. consider 
there are different learning styles. And that's yes. what they should be putting their money into. Even when I go out and do it, I did one yesterday, team building exercises for corporations. I discussed in personality styles, mm -hmm. learning styles mm -hmm. is the same thing. But you know, one of the participants yesterday said, do you have a program where you can teach this to youngsters? Because I can only imagine if I understood this about myself at an earlier age, how much better I would have done academically mm -hmm. and socially in school. This is where the money needs to go into, you know, um, preparing our kids not just academically, but to allow their specific uh, learning styles to shine, to allow them to shine where they are. Everyone is not going to be that traditional sit at a desk for six hours right. and raise their hand student. They're, but the others still have a great deal to contribute. If you want to call in and uh, talk on this subject, and we'll be moving along in just a few minutes, uh, you can call us at 868-0342 or 868-0351. But you know, the other thing that is so, I mean, bad about this is the fact that with, if you don't talk to students, you don't get to find out what their learning style is. Right. Everyone learns different. People don't realize how much of a magician mm -hmm. a teacher has to be. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, absolutely. To relate to everybody and knowing that failing the whole class doesn't mean you're being successful and everything. You have to find out what really works, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to measure. You have to measure because if it doesn't work, if you need to make modifications, you should be able to go in there and do that because, like Dr. Roll said, what happens is we wait 12, 13 years, and then you're in college, and you can't compete. You can't compete locally, right. let alone globally, mm -hmm. so you're at a huge disadvantage. And I don't understand why more parents aren't going, you know, like that's the Bastille, Bastille you know, storming the Bastille about that because our children, I mean, they're spending a whole every day mm -hmm. at this place that they're really getting very little out of. Yeah. But a lot of the parents were, you know, educated in the best possible way as well. Um, and a lot of them are just looking at, okay, just get my kid through this going back to what one of you guys stated earlier, I years ago I worked at uh, one of these charter schools where, and it was for troubled youth, where the parents were so proud because their students were getting 3.8, 4.0s, and these kids were not reading. These were high school mm -hmm. students, but not reading past a third grade level or fourth grade level, but they're getting 3.8s mm -hmm. and 4.0s. So if a parent is getting a report card That's at right. home that mm -hmm. says that, I'm good, you know, they're good. And they have no way of knowing themselves that this is not reflective of just what this child is capable of doing. This is more so this school is comparing them possibly against well, everyone else I, there. I think about this intensive program with Step It Up America, 90 days, eight something to 5.30 or something every, well, five mm -hmm. days a week. It's intensive. It's really intensive. It is. And I'd be interested a few months from now to interview him again to right. find out um, the quality of Absol the applicants yeah, that came in. And yes. we know there's quality out there, so yes. don't get me wrong mm -hmm. that it's not out there. But unfortunately, you know, there are a lot of individuals in the um, metropolitan Detroit area and outside the metropolitan Detroit area that don't have the basic skills to be successful even at a training program such as this. Well, scary. Scary, scary. There was one piece I wanted to add. Yes. The other elephant in the room is discipline. When you look at the, the day, how many hours, how much time is consumed with the teacher saying, don't do this, stop, mm -hmm. you know, right. that pulls away from teaching. It's a major distraction. Um, so again, you're looking at, you know, what the variables are that really take away from the school day and really being able to compete out there in the marketplace. If you spend half of your day in discipline, how much time is really being taught? Yeah. Absolutely. Know, so. And uh, learning to talk to people. Learning to talk to people. Part of my speech class used to be simulated job interviews, all of these Soft things. skills. Yeah, yeah those, those skills that they need to learn very early and to look in somebody's face when you're talking to them and not down at a phone all the time. That I, I'm kind of scared what social media yeah. is doing with the socialization process. But the research has even shown that um, the biggest predictor of success is not necessarily academic success, right. it's emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. So just like you said, teachers have to be magicians in the school. They also have to be therapists, counselors, you know, mediators, all those other things. 
of schools, especially these schools that are struggling economic in areas that are economically in despair, need to have more programs to help with emotional management. Mm -hmm. How do you manage your emotions? How do you relate to others? Your social interactions is going to be a huge part of your success on any job and in any school. Yeah, a middle school really needs help right now, and middle school young ladies. We could go on and on oh, about that. Yeah, middle school young oh. ladies, uh, uh, this one school, they went back to school this past Monday, and there were like four or five fights, and they were all girl fights, and they had uh, blossomed over the vacation through social media, mm -hmm. and this boy was looking at you. Th these girls are not processing consequences and everything and even the nice girls have been pulled into some things because they're trying to defend themselves from these other girls. Well I think we live in a society that glorifies that type of posture when you look at the real housewives, the basketball wives, you know all of these women who will fight at the drop of a hat to resolve a problem and so they look at this and they are in many regards trying to mock the behavior so and they may see it in their own good home as point, well. Good point, good point, miss. Uh, J. Rue Campbell, the young man from Cass Tech, has been readmitted, or is being readmitted after the body slamming incident. Mm -hmm. And with the body slamming incident, you know, remember he picked up a security guard and yeah. he threw him down. I had an issue with this because of the fact that I haven't seen any consequences yet, and he's being allowed to go back into school. And I'm wondering if somebody who wasn't an athlete would be allowed the same thing. And in most school districts in the state of Michigan, if you touch a staff member in some kind of way that's yeah. not right, you are expelled from the district, not just the school, the district. I don't know what's happening here. I can tell you. Here's what happens when you don't respect authority. Here's what happens when there's no discipline in the home. Um, when you don't you know, address these issues at two, three, four, and five years old, once they're in high school, it's too late. So really, a situation like Jaru, even though I could be Jaru's mother, you know, it should have been addressed a long time ago. And it's not just him, but the Jaru's of the world in general who don't respect authority. But the issue they're having now, if they would be cast technical high school, is go. that if someone else happens to be in this mm -hmm. type of situation and they choose to expel this individual, now you're treating similarly situated mm -hmm. people differently. And, and there is a, a process, as Ms. Pyramid knows, I, I taught for one year or so and I do a lot of hearings with students that may have issues and have to meet with the board and go back in. You're completely right. There, You should be expelled. There is a, a phrase that states that you can have a reinstatement hearing and go through different things like that but most times those students are not successful and as Ms. Perriman stated not only are you expelled from that particular school mm -hmm. but from that district and for I've seen students removed from the district for far less, less severe yeah. situations as opposed to this adult being body slammed in front of all of these other students mm -hmm. so you know, it, it's very interesting. Well, I they've put the, the guard on trial. They've put the guard on trial now. I mean, I'm talking about people. The, uh, people. I talked to somebody this morning who, well, I heard this guard did this, that, or the other thing. Now, you, all of you went to schools that probably had security guards, mm -hmm. and you know, I know you did too. Mm -hmm. I was there. Um, but if you, I can see, you know, these. If, if he said, oh, the person said, well, the bodyguard touched him. I've seen bodyguards say, come yeah, on along, son, to. come on with me. You have to. And, or I've done it. I've done it. I was, see, oh, now it's, it's a completely different situation because, and we, don't get me wrong, there were students that I went to school with that may have sassed or talked back to adults, but we overall had much more respect yes. for authority figures and for adults these children don't respect themselves. They don't respect their parents. There, there, there is no level of respect for anyone. Whenever I have a young man, and this has happened several times, say we're in court and I'll call for Johnny Smith and his mom walks over and I'll say, well, are you Johnny Smith? And she'll say, well, no, that's my son. Well, I need you to have a seat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. Really? Yes, and it happens more often than not because they they lack parenting. They they have not been parented. They have big sisters or brothers that just happen to be their mom and or dad. Mm-hmm. So how do you learn when you've never been taught or they haven't been taught? So it's just a vicious cycle that keeps repeating itself, which goes back to school. But then again, the teacher. As, as was stated, there's only so much you can do because you can't be the parent and the teacher, though you are, and, and I've been there to do that too, but there's a problem when the student is providing the teacher more respect than the parent, mm-hmm. and then you bring the parent in and you understand why. Mm-hmm. I've called home to speak to parents and say, hey, well, I just want to let you know Karen is behind in these three assignments, and, and I've had a parent say back to me, what do you want me to do? Mm-hmm. Nothing. I got it. Yeah, because right, I right. already see what's going on yeah. there. So now I'm going, but this is just me in particular. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take the extra steps to help this student. Not all teachers are going to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So it, it just, the kids are really at a disadvantage. Absolutely. They're at a disadvantage many times. And we've sat in on, on parent-teacher mm-hmm. conferences where all the teachers for this student come. And then, uh, yes. then the student is there and the parent is there. Mm-hmm and the parent just listens. And a lot of times I don't see a change. And then sometimes we've had these conferences and the student comes in, the counselor, the teachers, parent doesn't even show up. That's right. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, it's it's unfortunate. So where is this child gonna learn about consequences? And somebody said, well, he had to spend those few days in, in detention or whatever. That's not going to do it. I'm not saying send the guy to jail, but he has to have some consequences. And I think that this has opened up a floodgate for other Mm -hmm. students who have been expelled to come back and say, well, look, Mm -hmm. what I did wasn't even as bad as that. Yeah, Yeah. they have a a grounds now to base a Mm -hmm. legal grounds to argue their point. So it'll be interesting to see, hopefully, you know, he can get himself together. Right, and, and he hasn't well. been sentenced mm-hmm. yet, so there's a possibility he will be placed on some form of probation, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But what do you think it it tells the students who go to Cas Tech already, the ones who were in the hall, who saw this, and they were going, uh, you, you, you heard this. They've been used to this guy getting preferential yeah. treatment, that, you know, which yeah. is why it's everybody kind of, it wasn't, mm-hmm. exactly. So this, this kid, probably since middle school, when someone first saw that, ooh, dollar signs, on his, the back of his jersey, they started giving him preferential treatment, and the students there at the high school were well aware of this, which is why they probably were amazed when a guard challenged him mm-hmm. uh, to do what was expected of him. But a lot of that still comes back to the home. Yes, oh, well, because, because when they interviewed his mother, you right? Know, yeah, they because I it. remember, like my son, ninth grade, did terrible. And they were going to try and let him play. I said, "Oh no, he's just mm-hmm. not right. going to play. Mm-hmm. It's coming right from here. He's go- but he's going to every game, yeah. and he's going to sit and watch his friends mm-hmm. play." Mm-hmm. That taught him a good lesson. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, it I did, did because he spoke to that at your graduate at your retirement yeah. party. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, as an adult, that mm-hmm. was still that lesson was mm-hmm. still instilled in him. Oh, we mm-hmm. remember those harsh punishments. I know consequences. I when you <laughs> teach your children, you're teaching your grandchildren That's because right, what you teach them, they're going to hand, hand down. Mm-hmm. And it's just so funny <laughs> seeing my grandson giving him the same holy Hector he used to give me. But I, I wasn't this child's friend. He might have been the... Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to go take it. I see it's just getting smaller. I'm trying. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I'm oh, so sorry. <laughs> She's getting shorter. I'm sure she had the rose. Oh, this is like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I'm drinking. Sorry. sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm um, so sorry. Now, Aretha Franklin. Ooh. And Patty LaBelle was the subject of a fake assault story. Mm-hmm. The assault story. You guys are silly. Okay. Somebody else talk about the assault story. Well, you know, this new this um nerd news, because my brother posted a story that he thought was real and I had to read it because I'm like, he posted a story about Leonardo DiCaprio getting the lead role. 
around with the king. The king yeah. the and he was outraged. Like, my brother's post was like, how in the he heck was, are they going to be? And it's so many of these satirical. <laughs> It's good for Oh, yes. No, but having, they, they had this picture of Leonardo. I saw that. It was crazy. DiCaprio, and he's going to have black faces. He's our laser king. And so I had to read the story, and I'm like, this is because what a lot of people are doing on social media is going down to read that these are satirical right. sites. They, just they are that making part. up yeah. news, but that's oh. the sad part because there are so many people who just read and believe every single you thing they You see the image reading. and run with it. Because yeah. a good friend of mine who's very, very literate mm -hmm. sent that email literate. to me yeah. about mm -hmm. Aretha. I said, that's a, that can't be true. <laughs> I, you know, that would have been in the New York Times or something like that, but I mean, that thing about, you know, with the Leo DiCaprio story, my first thought was, he's not good at that good actor. <laughs> I didn't even think about the color. I just said, oh, he can't oh like oh, you know. But um, Aretha Franklin is suing. She's filing a $10 million mm. oh, you know, lawsuit against New News mm. Nerd over this because this really got around, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. And what I did see on this, that's the first time I saw this particular site because there's other um, that at the bottom say this is a satirical site. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that. It wasn't on this. On this mm -hmm. particular site does not state that it's satirical. So that's, that oh, could be a that. loophole there. Because when I read what my brother posted about the Martin Luther King, <laughs> I, I scrolled all the way down to see if it said it was satirical. It didn't say it, but it was so many comments of people like, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. and um, it, So who I won? guess folks got to be <laughs> careful. <laughs> but I think the Aretha Franklin piece, I think the queen, My please don't bitch. sue me. I think she may have thrown some shade at Patti LaBelle. During that White House thing? Yeah, because I think Patti wanted to give her, acknowledge her and Aretha she just walked on through. I saw the yeah. film. Also, this is where so this they is just kinda, I think make so. it funny. Mm -hmm. but it, from the information that was gathered, it does state that there is a disclaimer at the bottom of the site explaining that the it stories does, okay. are, yeah, for I entertainment purposes it. only. I didn't see it when I looked at it, but hopefully it is there, and that can be his I'm saving grace. Sure. <laughs> you know, because when I see those stories, I look at the bottom to see, see yeah. you know, who it, Check who the it's credentials, from, yeah. but, um, Back to Le <laughs> Leo, Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. I was baffled. And I <laughs> even told people, because I told my husband, I said, you know, they post, they, they're making Leonardo DiCaprio the Le Martin Le Luther King. The Martin okay. Luther King. Because I did not see the satirical. And it was like hundreds of people mm -hmm, commenting mm -hmm. on yes. this site, like, how dare they? And this, mm -hmm. you know, people in Hollywood are upset. And I'm like, I mean, they got me for a moment. Because it wasn't <laughs> about being a white person. It was just, I don't think he's that good an actor to do that. That was my first thought. I wasn't even thinking the other thing. I just received a post the other day that said, it was a quote from Thomas Edison that stated, everything on the internet is correct. And accurate. <laughs> Do you get Thomas it? Yeah. Thomas Edison. Mm -hmm. And someone's going to say Thomas right. Edison. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. He's no longer <laughs> here. Okay. He's here no longer before. here. Right. Okay. Before we get to our last one, you brought up something about Mimi. Well, I asked because I've been hearing all about oh. this Mimi, but I don't know what's going on. I'm getting bits and pieces of it. So Mimi mm -hmm. Faust is one of the individuals on Love and Hip Hop which is another oh, so reality show, show okay. uh, that comes on BET. I think it's BET. I thought it was VH1. VH1? It's VH1, okay, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And what the, the big news about Mimi this past week or so is that she uh, has a sex tape that is mm -hmm. out. There's s snippets or pieces of it that have been released, mm -hmm. but there's supposed to be a release date for the entire video, and actually I just saw something where Steve Harvey commented on it today yeah. and basically All what week he was he's saying been commenting on yeah it. he was just really appalled and saying that women in particular we need to think before we do things especially women with children mm -hmm. and this uh, particular lady Mimi she does have a daughter right and he was saying that you know especially doing things on the internet that's going to be there forever. Ever. When it's forever. in cyberspace, mm -hmm. it's there. There's absolutely nothing you can do. Her to grandchildren get rid of. Yes. will see. Yes, it will that. be there yeah. forever. Yes. Yeah. And the thing about it is, I think that a lot of them are trying to top each other mm -hmm. in what they do, so that they can either stay on the show, achieve other fame, and everything. But where does pride come in? 
what I mean, you, you know, he was saying, and I think right. another mm -hmm. good point he made was that, um, and I hate to say it like this, but he said, "Black women, you guys can't do Look this him. because mm -hmm. Kim Kardashian mm -hmm. has built an empire based off of it." Let's be honest, right? Yes. And this this teen mom has made yeah. a heck of a lot of mm -hmm. money. This recent teen, the teen mom who mm -hmm. was on the teen mom show, she decided to make a sex tape, and she has, you know, made um, six, seven figures mm -hmm. from a sex tape or what have you. And they're looking at all the uh, people who are not of Golly, color. how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> See, I cannot. Oh, oh Lord. It's Good Friday. Oh, We're not going to do this today. Oh, oh, yeah. I cannot. <laughs> oh, oh, nothing. But, it, but he was I'll saying see. how, you know, no, black just... women who have tried to mimic that, you're mm -hmm. not successful. Think of, you remember the Corrine, Corrine Stephens. I won't call oh, yeah, her so name, yeah, is, uh, but yeah, you guys so probably you know. know. But, you know, she wrote all these books that did well. I mean, she had a lot of background and history with some of the biggest names in the entertainment industry. Right. But she really, that was it. It, that it was, was like, it. she mm -hmm. fizzled real quick. And now minutes, all of yeah. her dirty laundry is, is out, out there. there forever. Forever. So it's, um, hey, I guess for, like we said, the team mom and for Kim Kardashian, they looking at it like this was an investment and it's worth the money. But um, when the money's gone, and it may not ever be gone for the Kardashians, mm -hmm. you know, but for this Mimi trying to just And they're talking yourself. about the shower curtain thing. I, she, she loved Did it. you see it, Brenda? <laughs> Please don't start. I saw what, a What happened picture. with the shower curtain? Well, with the shower okay, curtain, there's a scene in the bathroom. Uh -huh. where she has a, there's a gold shower curtain bar. She, saw, she watched it a couple times. No, I did oh. not watch it like that. I don't need to. I, mean, okay. I don't need to. Bam. But listen, listen to me. Um, <laughs> listen to me. I wonder about these uh, these young women, black women. What are they saying? What Everybody has access to a movie camera mm -hmm. via their phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't care what you say, parents do not police television shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, I mean, these they children on, can get on the internet. All you have to do is click and say you're 18. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. correct. Oh yeah, they're watching, you know, all this stuff. And you know, developmentally, that's going to happen. As a parent, you have to put restrictions and try to prevent it. But come on, we can all go back to when we were Exactly. You will sneak and watch TV. You know, when yeah. you have the internet. I was the lookout. I, yeah, yes. exactly. You, you know. will sneak. <laughs> you were the lookout. I was the lookout. My brother would have to position me at the corner, so if somebody <laughs> came, I had to let him know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> but it's, it's our jobs as parents to understand that, you know, our kids are going to attempt to do what comes naturally developmentally, but yes. it's our job to be there to catch them or mm -hmm. um, stop it, or if they do something that's not appropriate, there are consequences like we talked about But it's before. funny, too, because we were speaking about this yesterday at the nail salon, and there was a, a young lady in there getting her nails done, and she said her daughter was 15, and she was singing one of the Beyonce songs about yeah. surfboard yeah. and, oh, you okay. know, and okay. drinking okay. watermelon and all of this. Mm -hmm. So she asked her if she understood what Beyonce was really singing or what she was saying, mm -hmm. and the little girl was confused, and she said, well, what, no, you know, can you explain it to me? So she, she said she had an outer body experience because it was like, do I tell her or do I not tell mm -hmm. her? And she realized and had to make a split decision. She's going to learn it somewhere yeah. else. So She'll let it come her. from me mm -hmm. and be correct. And she Absolutely. said mm -hmm. she, she chose to explain and mm -hmm. talk to her about it. Well, you know, as Henry Tyler told me just a moment ago, it's time to wrap it up. Wrap I mean, up. the fastest hour in television. Fastest. We could go on and on and on. And ladies and mm -hmm. gentlemen, I'd like you to have a happy Easter. And I know it's Good Friday and my co-host got a little off the chain, but uh, <laughs> I tried to keep it solemn for everybody. <laughs> no, just joking. I, oh, I really wish goodness. you a happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter. Easter. Be safe, everyone. See mm -hmm. you next week with more Table Talk. <laughs>